Thanks for our audience. Okay, here we go. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. The Funky Podcast. Get off the loo. It's Funkin' Time. Get off your shoes. Funkalicious. And listen up to me and Sean and Vaughn and whatever. Talk about Tish. Funkular. Funky Podcast. Funktastic. Funky Podcast. I'm gonna funk all over your ears. Funky Podcast. Funkalicious. Funky Podcast. Okay. Hi. Yeah, welcome to the Funky Podcast. My name is Kieran. And I. And we are here today to discuss something, as we have done the last three episodes, and we will very likely do the next subsequent, however many we do. Yes. Um, so, Sean, what are we going to talk about today? You know, I think that's like, that's a lot of pressure you're putting on me right now. We're like, okay, 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 I'll, I'll say it. We are talking about memes, this very new uh, and underground thing that's been mainstream for 15 years or more. Wow, that sounds absolutely incredible. It is incredible. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of uh, wonderful memes out there, but there are a lot of really crap ones too. And yeah. I definitely have been prone to see the crap ones. And, you know, I. <sighs> a lot of them are just, you know, it's like the internet. Mm. 90% of it is absolute shit, but there is that 10% that's absolutely hilarious and brilliant and will continue to be, you know, uh, relatable and funny and all that so yeah as um as filthy frank once said there are good memes and there are bad memes why has god abandoned us yeah of course um so what kind of part of it would you kind of be i guess we can start from the start actually yeah. um you know the the dawn of memes now mm -hmm. i didn't actually know what a meme was i knew of like funny pictures with text that's literally, I didn't know that was called a meme. I just said, uh, funny yeah. picture with text. You know, there was like, um, you know, that picture of the angry baby or something. Yeah. And then like, you know, it, you'd see like, you know, when blah, blah, blah happens to blah, blah, blah. And you, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Ha, ha, ha. I do that. And yeah. And then. I was actually looking up what the first meme was. Apparently, it was actually that dancing baby that was created on that software in the 90s, I believe. Yeah. That, that was the first one. Um, mm. Fittingly, it started with a baby. Yeah. And, yeah, no, I think very, very, f that was the first visual meme, but the mm. one, I think, was, it was during... Like some war or something, someone made like a drawing, and that was considered as the first meme. I'm not sure what it mm. was, but it's very like something your granddad would tell you about or something. Yeah, he he'd be like sitting me down to talk about his days in the war when him and his comrades were just out in the battlefield sharing memes as they fought off the Germans. Of course. Um, so. After that, then, we kind of, especially when we got prone to the internet, um, we got into some stuff. Like, there's a whole history of memes and things like that. And, you know, they impact our culture in really, really positive ways, especially during a pandemic or in uh, other things where memes would be a way of escape for the terrible things going on in our world in general. You know, with the election and stuff like that, you'd see yeah. election memes, and, you know, and some of them are in good taste and will make you sort of laugh or 
when that slap happened at the Oscars, mm. the amount of memes that were created out of that was uh, uh, infinite, you know. It's yeah. Really, really good uh, stuff going on. What's your opinion on all of this kind of thing? Uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head right there. You know, um, you know that they can be a form of escape. You know, like sometimes, um, yeah, you know, just like I'd, I'd see, like I'd, I don't know, I'd see a meme of like all that Chris Rock slap Will Smith's Chris Rock stuff, and then like you know, in the midst of everything, I'd just be like, you know, I wish I could live in this world instead of the real world. I wish I wish I could live in this like slap happy world um, that this meme has created. Um, and yeah, they can also be used to uh, share opinions in a lot of ways. Some, uh, you know, some can share opinions in a funny way. Some can just do it in a, I don't know, kind of a lazy way. Like you know, when they have like the Chad versus the Virgin memes nowadays, and it's just like, I guess like first off, my opinion on those is like at first they were kind of good, but now they're so overused, and I think and I feel like they're just used to share an opinion without actually saying anything funny. Which memes are that? Again? Oh, it's the one where it's like you know, it's like the chatter. It's like the guy with the beard, and he's like blonde and everything, and then there's the other guy who's like crying, and he has like he's, he looks like a little nerdy fella, and it's just you oh. know, yeah, those, those those just feel a bit uninspired at this point. Mm. Yeah, no, it's um. It's really interesting, though, how, you know, memes change over time and the culture of it, you know what I mean? Um, I remember the the internet was just full of uh, funny cat videos. Yeah, yeah. Of cats playing the piano and uh, the laughing compilation of people laughing. Um, Yeah. that's That's a great video. All the cat videos, truly, like, back in those days, we were just drowning in pussy, you know? We just like we just like we were right up there and all that pussy. Yes, um, and yeah, there was just so much that kind of happened, and then uh, we had the dawn of uh, the YTP. Oh yeah, no, the classics still uh, still very relevant today. I would argue because like you know, there's a lot of like uh, content now that's like even it's not, even if people don't technically call it a YTP, it's still very much got the same DNA. Yeah, no, there was um. If you don't know what a YTP is, a YTP is basically, it stands for YouTube Poop. And what it is are basically movies that are edited or television shows or YouTubers or any sort of video basically Mm. just edited in a funny way. So basically it is just a meme compilation of a funny edits uh some not so funny but some mm. very very uh funny and yeah like for example they take something like mickey mouse clubhouse and would edit some sort of either inappropriate kind of thing for that television show and kind of make it sort of funny and kind of in context with it it's it's some are you know, it's like everything. Some are great, some aren't. And yeah, no, that are arguably the YTP culture is still uh, relevant to this day. It's just in kind of a smaller uh, scale, even though they don't call them YTP. Some people still do, but some yeah. people uh, don't. They're just kind of funny edits. And, you know, there, there are a lot of uh, good ones out there that really do cause the funnies and the bellies, especially... I was talking to you about that Darth Vader video. Yeah. Of, um, it was a clip from The Empire Strikes Back where I believe it was Admiral Piet came to Vader to tell him about a deflector shield. And they've taken the footage and while he's in the middle of a sentence, Vader like shuts down his shuttle thing and then like opens it again. And then he continues talking and then he shuts it down again and it's kind of like back and forth. It's very well done. It, it's very yeah. good. I think there was another uh, edit of uh, Han Solo and while he's being tortured, he's forced to listen to Man, I Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain, mm. which is kind of funny. And uh, yeah, there's many uh, other, uh, especially with Star Wars, a lot of them are really, really good. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, funny 
uh, memes, especially in like the Star Wars culture, even though you, if you've never seen any of the films, you will definitely have heard one of the quotes from either online somewhere, uh, that being, you know, just a, a genuine uh, oh. quote from a meme or something like that. Yeah, no, very ingrained into pop culture in general. Um, you're unlikely to have not uh, been exposed to something Star Wars related. Like, you know, um, if you're ever, if you like, if for example, like you're an orphan, uh, shout out to all the orphans out there listening. But like, if you're an orphan and then like someone comes in to adopt you and they say like, I'm your father now, you can like, you can just like clap back there and say, haha, six Star Wars reference. And, um... Yeah, and they can like they can like they can convince you like all they want that it's just like that not everything has to be a reference and to stop being so obsessed with like things that aren't real. But to that I say no, and you should say no too. Uh, Do you agree? Uh, I agree. Yes, I, I do. Um, it, it's very interesting though. Like you know, a lot of memes. Some people kind of. Uh, take uh, the wrong way with uh, some memes that happen out there uh, at first when you hear a song and it becomes a meme some people are like oh well that means it's a stupid song it's a silly song it's Mm -hmm. you know kind of a ridiculous song like I believe Down With The Sickness by Disturbed became a meme (laughs) yeah and then uh, Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. Mm. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Since you did that one, I had to do it. Of course, of um, course. Sorry. Um, and, you know, a lot of people kind of take that the wrong way. It doesn't mean they're necessarily bad songs. Those are just mm. things that people chose. And it's the same with movies because really, really good films become memes. It's just, I believe. In the sense that anything can become a meme. It yeah. just matters what kind of gets trending on the Reddits or the uh, popular uh, way. And uh, especially now with uh, the app TikTok, it's very, very much a really, really good place to kind of get something out there mm. fast. So it's really surprising like how fast it can like gain uh, followers and uh, game views and stuff like that it's incredible um yeah like anything can become a meme like you can upload you like you can like go out there and like upload a touching video of a speech you gave at a wedding or at your grandmother's funeral and like you know two days later for all you know like they'll be making ytps of that and like you have nothing to do you have no control over it you i, I think that's very beautiful yeah no it's uh, you know someone could uh, take footage of anything and if there's enough words in there, they, you, they can make you sing Smash Mouth, you mm. know. And it's really strange how some things kind of catch on, um, like the Shrek stuff. You know, when I was growing up, Shrek was just a movie. Same. Uh, he was just a character I very much had. Uh, a very very good escape with and yeah. really really enjoyed yeah when indoors. I was a kid I definitely I looked at Shrek and I said like man this is like a fantastic uh, pair because like there's only two films at the time this is a fantastic pair of films I sure hope in years to come nobody like uploads a video with them having sex with Shrek yeah. but phew, if only I knew what I was in for yeah and it's I'd recommend to people and I'm being very serious about this You know, when you go see a movie and you hear either a quote or you see a certain scene that is either a meme or something, I think it's important to remember that that's not what makes the movie. What matters is the thing as it's as as a whole. You know what I mean? It's, um, you know, like Shrek to me is still a really, really wonderful film. And I don't care about, you know, oh, it's so weird. Like, oh, you know, like oh, Shrek this, Shrek is life, you know, Shrek is mm. you know, all that kind of thing. And it's, you know, you, it's important to kind of, you know, you forget about that. You have that kind of disconnect. Like, there's a lot of uh, funny things out there with that movie as well, you know. But I think as a whole, what matters is the movie on its own. And I, I think that's really important to just remember that 
you know, there's a lot of uh, creativity that went into that film, um, especially one of the best escape scenes of any film is the escape scene where they escape from the dragon's keep. It's like up there as like my top three escape scenes in a cinematic history, in my opinion. I, I think it's absolutely terrific. It's the score, the sound, everything, just stuff like that is what made the movie and it's not because of it becoming a meme and stuff like that you know and it's it really frustrates me you know um you know i don't think drugs are really like pandering towards to kind of create a meme culture i don't know about i don't know about today because i haven't seen the new ones uh, i don't think they are really like pandering at like some sort of meme culture too much but they will like throw like it hints and nods here and there to kind of mm. create some weirdness but i think they always like tell stories and stuff like that and it, it doesn't just go apply for dreamer it applies to uh, a lot of the movies out there that do become memes like uh, infinity war or you know some marvel properties or star wars properties you know i think mm. they they just have a certain thing where you know they the story at the end of the day and its core is what's important and I, I think it's important to kind of uh you know be engaged with story and with the characters and stuff like that instead of you know uh, yeah don't meme too hard yeah and you know i'm not saying you know don't meme at all that's completely the question meme all day meme I, I love responsibly it. yeah i guess so I, I don't know what i'm really like trying to say it's just that's just me every day. It's just frustrating to me. I'm not. I'm not going to name his name, but he said, "Oh, that's become such a meme or something." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, but like, that doesn't mean anything because what matters is at its core that it's still the same film that we saw all those years ago, and it's yeah, it's still having that impact. I think Shrek has impacted me more nowadays because I can. I've been, you know, I've seen many films years after that have tried to capture that same magic but failed to do so because there was a certain charm to it and there was a certain uh, energy to that and stuff. Like, I'd prefer to watch Shrek more than uh, any uh, cine pictures, le cinema and all that kind of thing, you know, black and white images. and Yeah, I don't know, it's just... You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I definitely know. I'm like, yeah, it's like the one thing like I don't get is when people like people like say Shrek is just a meme, which is like the only reason like it became a meme, or at least like I think a big part of the reason it became a meme was because people actually liked it in the first place. So like, I I don't think like oh it's a meme. It's like is actually a real criticism. Like especially because like okay, if you criticize the film for being a meme, like you're criticizing it for something that fans of it did afterwards, which makes no sense. Yeah. And I think that's, um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, like, I think that's a stupid criticism. Yeah, and it's not, it doesn't just apply for Shrek, it applies for basically yeah. any film that became a meme, really. Like, a lot of the, the Netflix stuff becomes uh, a meme here and there. It's literally anything, really, yeah. that just kind of trends or catches on or something. Um, Like, what was it, that movie Bird Box with Sandra Bullock? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It was like, you know, obviously her blind or something blindfolded yeah and that became a sort of meme or something like that and you know it's always uh the animated stuff that cat is on or uh, superhero films or yeah uh you know and i don't know if, if it will but i did an edit of the movie spiderwick with uh a scene of uh clint eastwood uh, giving out to the goblins. Yeah, that was good. And it's kind of people in the comments are talking about, oh my god, I remember Spider Wick. Oh my god, I haven't seen that movie in years. I remember yeah. it being weird. And like, you know, it's kind of, I get it, I guess in a good way, it's kind of giving people like a memory of, you know, when that movie came out and they're like, you know, they'll revisit that good film, but hopefully now. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, like, if that becomes a meme, I'll be very happy. But, 
you know what I mean? It's um, it's really interesting that the whole kind of meme culture and stuff like that. Um, sometimes it kind of impacts negatively. You know, a lot of negativity going on in the world, like a lot of uh, political things, and like people really take discomfort in that, especially like if it's such a serious topic and people are like giving it away, kind of. Uh, giving out what way you joking about this c- serious topic and sometimes people kind of need it uh, I'd argue that people need that sort of escape and that sort For of sure. thing and to be able to laugh but not laugh too hard you know what I mean and mm-hmm. realize that it, it's still a serious thing you know um but yeah that's kind of the whole culture really of it yeah for sure um and yeah, like going back to like what you said uh, just now um, about like you know with all the with all people like I don't know like for example like all people like remembering Spider Wick because if you like you read it you made it on TikTok and it's um, yeah and I think that's like that's quite nice because like that's kind of like similar thing for me with like certain films like B movie is a big one or it's mm-hmm. like I loved it as a kid and like when it started becoming a meme like I actually like and anima- it made me reminisce fondly on it and then look back on it and. Um, Honestly, like, I like it more nowadays than when I was a kid. I mean, just because, like, you know, I have, like, you know, like, I know, like, how writing works. I mean, I'd like to think I do. And I, I know, like, writing works and I can actually, like, appreciate, you know, um, yeah, all the, like, all the, like, kind of ways it, like, subverts, like, tropes and everything in, like, yeah. a pretty unique way, you know. Like, yeah. when I was a kid, I was just, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I was the same. <laughs> um, yeah, and there is, you know, I was... Like that with Shark Tale, as well. Yeah. Um, I, I did. I watched some of it one time. I must have been in like a really bad mood, and I was like, "Oh no, um, I don't know if this kind of holds up." But when I watched the whole film again, I kind of, I still like appreciate some of the stuff in it, and I appreciate uh, some of the things, and you know, when there is. Uh, certain memes of that film it's it's still you know when the quote happens it was the same with uh they're taking the hobbits to isengard you know with that scene and you're yeah like, yeah oh yeah you know like it's, it's such a normal thing. line yeah I'm it's the, the thing. thing of the thing you know and it you know you you still kind of there's that dicaprio mm. meme where he's pointing at the telly like, and like ironic that like now when people watch once upon a time in hollywood they're gonna have that same reaction to it <laughs> <laughs> it's like on, on <laughs> sorry no it's like um you know when uh i think it's like in rocky balboa where he's like he point your man points at him and like rocky yeah. points back it's like everyone they point at their telly yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant yeah oh um yeah no that, that's it's cruel that's cool. Like everyone, like saying hello there as well. When oh yeah, Obi Wan's about to say it and stuff. Yeah, that's brilliant. Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. No, there's like so many um, sort of things that kind of catch on, and then there's like really, really annoying ones that don't catch on at all. Mm. Uh, I remember there was a dancing hot dog. Do you remember that? Yeah, that that one that never really did it for me. That one it never did it for me. Any barely anybody it like showed up for about five five days and then we never saw him again. Yeah, and there's this whole thing about dead memes. I'm like, are memes really dead though? Like ever? Yeah, because some sort of quote or something will become relevant down the line. There is no no such thing as a dead meme, in my opinion. It will always yeah. come back. It will always be there. It will never go away, you know? Yeah, no, like, Shrek memes are, like, they've been around for, like, 10 years now. And, yeah. you know, they're still, they still feel very relevant. I feel like... I feel like Shrek memes kind of evolved, because, like, at first they were kind of making fun of the film. Yeah. I mean, that's just me, like, talking to my ass. Like, I could be wrong yeah. about this. I wasn't... You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't in depth in the meme culture to understand all that. But yeah, I feel like at first they're making fun of the film, mm. uh, but gradually over time, like then gradually over time, like people like ironically started liking it. 
But like they like ironically like made it out to be like better film than it is, but then like people realize like wait no it is actually a good film and that's like that's kind of where we're at now because like I think all the Shrek memes coming out now like despite being memes I feel like there is a genuine love for a uh, Shrek behind them which I think actually yeah. makes them better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like I feel like I feel like the same way about like random times but like I feel the same way about like Drake and Josh memes. Yeah, because yeah, like anytime yeah. like I see a Drake and Josh meme, there's like always people in the comments like talking about like you know I don't know how much they love the show and everything. Mm-hmm. It's like you know like I like that. There's always like some like sincerity. Mm. behind the memes for this yeah and uh i don't know if they've necessarily become a proper meme but you remember the olsen twins yeah yeah no there was uh they had made a lot of uh movies um and they made a lot of uh television stuff and it was looking back at it it's like very kind of disney channel nickelodeon for that era um i'm not sure what must have been like abc or one of those yeah. kind of American stations or, you know, made by some of those mm. um, studios. And I, I think what a lot of those are, are like kind of, they're very like, they seem kind of in that kind of comfort food sort of thing. They feel like, mm. you know, that kind of, um, you know, the movies that, the kind of family comedies that used to come out around, you know, like, they're happy feet or you know like um oh god you know they just seem like genuine sort of things that you would put on you know for the family or the kids or you know especially if you had especially at that time and uh there's a certain thing where people kind of look at those as like kind of uh cheesy and you know you could be right in saying that but a lot of people kind of make fun of them in the sense of making fun of it and you know should you like show that to your kid or something and it's i don't know it just becomes like a certain thing you know if uh, someone has like a genuine love for it or a genuine enjoyment of it and you know is enjoying it with uh their kid and like people are like oh but you know it's bad or something like that it just becomes a bit you know uh you know, it wasn't set out to kind of be weird or be this kind of thing. It was just set out to just be this family thing that people can watch. And, you know, that's mm. all it was. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. mean, it's better than the shit that you'd see on Disney Channel today. <laughs> if you yeah. watch back at some of the stuff, It's it seems pretty funny enough, like the sitcom sort of style. It's better than... Um, well, in my opinion, anyway, you know, but um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on uh, that whole thing? Kind of determining, determining between, you know, like it's kind of the same, really, with Shrek, I guess. You know, yeah, it's definitely around that sort of thing. Yeah, no, because like when I see people like making memes of like all those old like childhood films, like uh, yeah, like I mean, also like mentioned Mary Kate and Ashley ones. There's also like. A lot of the old, like, Disney Channel movies as well, like, um, like, I know, you, you, you Camp Rocks and stuff. Yeah. Um, when I see people, like, making me, oh, like, Good Burger, I mean, Stinkle, like, yeah, that's going, like, Good Burger is a good one as well, like, it's, you know, like, there, there was a couple of, uh, uh, Good Luck Charlie as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, like, they are funny, like, you know, like, yeah. there are some things where, like, you know, you'd, like, see Bob or something, it's like, mm. ah! <laughs> or something like that it's like I don't know like uh, your man like dancing and it's like all grainy it's like oh my god oh. <laughs> you know yeah no it was like MLG you know smoke oh my god. you know all that you know, kind of thing yeah. MLG yeah um, but yeah no like it's like you know some people like make memes of all that and it's just like you know, like, it's not done, like, really to criticize them. Like, nobody's, like, looking back on those saying, like, oh, yeah, it's, like, a masterpiece in writing or anything. Like, I mean, if they yeah. if they do say that, they're probably joking and everything. But it's, like, yeah. what's important is, like, the emotional impact it made on the person when they watched it that's, like, you know, that, like, keeps it in their memories today, I think. You know, that's, yeah. what, that's what's most important. Yeah. Like, not, like, not to get caught up in, like, uh, what is it? But so-and-so, it's, like, yeah, but it's, like, nobody's... Nobody's, like, pretending that they're anything that they're not, I think. Yeah. And um, that kind of goes with... Um, I remember uh, when I was uh, doing film in college, and I was only there for a little bit, but um, mm. I remember having this discussion with 
uh, someone um, at that point they were on about um, you know in the news uh, that we got was they are in discussion on rebooting the Princess Bride mm. and this was a couple of years ago um, and sorry there are people getting murdered shut up story. people yeah um you know, and th- there was a certain uh, someone that was was obsessed with the Princess Bride and loved that film, rightly so. And there was someone that kind of defended it, saying, "No, that's not it. It's cheesy. It's stupid." And this was someone that was obsessed with like Cindy pictures and cinema mm-hmm. and all this kind of thing. And th- there's a certain thing where people are like oh you uh, animated movies aren't real films they are just kind of mm. entertainment for uh childhood minds and it's all bullshit which is not true like a lot of them no kind no, of i know you know uh connect with lots of people and they are made for everybody and um it's just to say you know if something is become a meme or Mm. has become a certain uh thing as a joke or you know kind of like that it's okay to like that thing even though it's kind of people make fun of it all the time you know it's there for your own enjoyment i think you should be allowed to watch it as for what it was created for rather than you know what something and the representation of it uh, that it has online on the internet, you know, mm. you know what I mean. Like if you look up Shrek online and you're like genuinely interested in seeing the movie, you know, someone that hasn't seen it, yeah. and they just see all these odd-looking pictures that may uh, show up online or you know videos, you know, hello there and all that. Like oh hello there. I I used to go down and my donkey was fat. You know, the stuff like that. And yeah. It's um, yeah, it kind of, you know, it, it could sort of create a bit of a disconnect to actually watch that sort of thing. So I would just say it's to anyone that's like interested in seeing sort of any sort of property that has become sort of a joke or has become that sort of thing that it's okay you can check these kind of things especially if you're really young and stuff and you haven't watched Shrek or any of the childhood movies from that era like I, I'd i feel free to uh, go back and uh, check some stuff out because a lot of that stuff is really good so for sure yeah no um I definitely, like, yeah, I'd agree, like, you know, I don't like it um, when memes can, like, overtake something and then it's, like, that becomes their reputation because a lot of the time, like, you know, it just leads to other people, like, misassuming things about them and then, like, you know, disliking them based on that and it's just, like, you know... Yeah. Don't do that, I guess, is is what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, you know, it's... I don't know. <laughs> it's it's just such a um, it's a really really um sort of interesting like thing though with uh, a lot of um things that people see nowadays uh, rather than you know uh, things that you know were created before, and it's really really interesting how uh, a lot of old stuff becomes memes. And sometimes it's really, really good, especially if, you know, you, you've never heard of something, but then when it catches on, you're like, oh, what's, mm. what's this, you know? And sometimes it's a good way to kind of market it, in a way. Mm. And uh, I, I would imagine that some people in the marketing team or in any sort of team or something will create memes just to, to build up hype for 
uh, the property or the movie that is about to be either announced or be made or something like that. I would imagine there are people in the industry that do that, which is a really, really smart kind of thing to do. Cause yeah. That's where a lot of the kids are nowadays. Yeah, I've seen like... Um, uh, I know they call it astroturfing or something. I think they call it some some weird like that. But yeah, where it's like I uh, know like like studios will like pay people to make memes about the film and uh, you know as advertisement, which like a lot of people a lot of people like think that's what happened with um if you remember uh, Fast and Furious Nine last year um if you don't remember that I don't blame you um <laughs> but yeah then like when that film was coming out there was like all of a sudden like out of nowhere like this whole big like family me with like dominic toretto came about yeah, and like a lot of people I remember. a lot of people thought that was kind of suspicious mm -hmm. it just like it was just like everywhere overnight like coincidentally as soon as the new film was coming out yeah 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 and was, um yeah there's a lot of uh that sort of thing like there was a lot of buzz about the emoji movie if you remember that <laughs> like it was how could i forget mm, yeah that was um it was like online a lot like it was kind of yeah. everywhere and everybody knew about it and stuff like that and everybody was talking about it um uh cats as well cats 2019 oh, uh yeah. even though people didn't watch it people were l like me <laughs> um, <laughs> were kind of intrigued to see it and uh yeah it was um it was definitely um you know a, a lot of that kind of thing that kind of catches on and uh, sometimes uh, for the good, sometimes for the bad. Yeah. But what I will say is no matter what uh, meme or what uh, stars or what kind of uh, shows are around uh, the certain property, the reason why a lot of these movies do so well isn't because there are memes for it. It isn't because there is a certain actor or actress or someone... Um, part of the project it's because somehow it's resonated with the audience and the people that have uh, gone to see it and it captures something like you can't convince someone to see a movie 10 times you just can't you can't yeah no. uh, brainwash someone to do that it's obviously that it's connected with them in some way and they have a relationship with this and even though it's not a cine picture or whatever you call and it's not arts and it's all that kind of thing uh, even if, you know, you can like argue whatever it is if, you know, if it's connected uh, with someone and it's a good story that has uh, brought them joy, then uh, you shouldn't argue with that. Yeah, no, I see a lot of people say the same thing like music sometimes where it's like, I know like, a lot of people like, would accuse, like, this is just like a random example, like a lot of people like, would accuse like Billie Eilish as someone of just being like, yeah, yeah. oh, she's just pushed by the industry, yeah, like, yeah, she's just like, they're just, they're just forcing her on everyone, but it's like, I mean, like, even if that was true and it's, like, eh, it does, doesn't really seem... It seems very questionable that that's even true in the first place. But, like, yeah. even if it was, like, like yeah, they could market her all they want. They could, like, push something like the radio. But, like, the reality is, like, they couldn't force anyone to, like, actually love her music. And, like, I, I think, like, I think, like, literally, like, there was, like, so, there was, like, so much proof out that like there are millions and millions of people that like love her music and like no amount of like marketing can actually like make that happen so yeah, that is true yeah even if even if like she even if like she was like an industry plan or whatever they call her in the beginning like that doesn't matter anymore because like there's a reason she's still around yeah that's true um yeah no i i, I fundamentally very much agree with that um i mean she gets people in the at the concerts and stuff like that and yeah. Yeah, she really uh has uh made you know a name for herself and stuff like that and a lot of people have like uh caught on in the industry and stuff like that and have uh got on well not because of you know any sort of uh thing that is written down and like a lot of people are so obsessed with that idea that you know studios are just these like probably there are mm. and people can't talk about that because they will never work again that's why they can't talk about it i'm yeah. sure they would love to talk about it but they just 100%. genuinely can't uh diss on anyone because they'll never uh create anything again and they you know they won't be able to uh, uh advance their careers mm. but um you know there's um <laughs> there's certain like artists and stuff like that that i even dislike but i can't 
help but say that they they are obviously doing a wonderful job if they are uh, still relevant to this day and they're still uh, getting p- people uh, loving them and uh, talking about their music and you know uh, getting uh, into them and stuff like that and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day even like with memes whatever meme kind of makes you laugh unless it's like you know absolute cruelty right you know anything yeah. like that um you know whatever kind of connects with you it that's okay you know if you find it funny um and uh, whatever you kind of enjoy like there was uh that um man who uh adores uh Dua Lipa it was uh this old guy and uh, this old gentleman and he was like really really amped and very excited and out uh, the fair play to her she reacted to it and was very uh, happy that he was so, you know, full, full of love and joy and stuff like that, of uh, a genuine heart for that. And I think that's that's really nice to see. And, you know, there was there's this whole thing as well of, like, meme culture where they will kind of degrade someone, especially Star Wars fans nowadays. Mm. There was, uh, I'll, I'll talk about two things. Uh, the first one I'll talk about that happened uh, around the time of Mandalorian Season 2 and one that happened when the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer dropped. Okay, so the first one is of Star Wars Theory. Uh, he kind of became a bit of a meme and a bit of uh, people were making fun of him on the internet. Um, even like one of the writers from like one of the books or something from Lucasfilm. Really? Yeah. No, mate, like, this cunt, like, sorry, he put that picture of him crying on his stream, on his cover picture on Twitter. That seems a bit unprofessional. It is unprofessional, and it wasn't a joke. Some people pretend that it was an actual joke, and he was like, oh, no, it's fine, you know, he was just having a laugh, I think he's misunderstood. He, that's such a dick move to do. Like, who would do that? Like, I wouldn't do that to my friend. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do that to you if you cried on a stream. Like, right, I'd probably, same. like... No, like, why Why would you do that, Pablo? Why? Anyway, so... Did he even know, like, what he was crying about? Because, like, that could, like, really change the context a oh, lot. Oh, no, no. So, it was a stream of him watching the finale of season two of Mandalorian. Oh. And it was Luke Skywalker with his lightsaber. Mm-hmm. And he has a really, really big connection to Luke. Yeah. and some people just thought it was absolutely somehow hilarious that he was crying which doesn't yeah. make any sense whatsoever he's because just, a lot of people got emotional over that yeah he's just like i mean he's, he's 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 being like sentimental like in front of you which i think is like very respectable no, he has a really really big connection to star wars to luke to anakin to so many characters and that and then some people just throw him under the bus just because he's a guy reacting to it it doesn't matter you know he's yeah. a guy if you don't like him fuck off don't watch that you know it's just so irritating to me that you will go out of your way to do something like that um especially to someone so humble and down to earth with that um sort of thing and um you know it wasn't just that creative but it was like other people around that and like lucasfilm didn't really reach out to him that much it was actually as some people online that actually did reach out to him and fair play to them but you know it's just so um annoying that people would like make fun of that fan Mm. um and then like if some people think if he was female, then they would have been like, oh, she's so brave or something. But then we get to this. So the second one is the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer came out. Mm-hmm. And um, this uh, girl got overly emotional. She's actually She was in Star Wars Theory's fan film, actually. She played oh. Pad. She played Padme in it. Good for her. And um, yeah, she she seems really invested in Star Wars, invested in the world, and yeah, she seems like a really, really genuine person. I I can't remember what her name is for the life of me. I think it's like Catherine Les Les Sale. Um, so I'm probably butchering the name. Um, apologies for that, but. 
basically she uh, cried during a got overly emotional uh, with it. And Howard Stern from his talk, you know who Howard Stern is. Yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting him to show okay. up. Okay. <laughs> um, so he has a radio podcast in the American um, radio. In the uh, USA. In the USA. And living in the USA. Um, and living then in the USA. He was on about Obi-Wan Kenobi. And all this is so stupid. You know, there's a lot of sweaty men that uh, live in their basement and have loads of like Star Wars toys around and sit in Star Wars pajamas and they're all crazy. But did you know? There's actually, like, young women, young, really cute women that mm. also do this. And, like, he was on about this. And he actually played the clip on his radio show of her crying. And, like, basically, like, slammed her on like, the radio, which is kind of mental. Like, what? That's why would you, like, give out about someone's happiness? Like, what's that? Why about? does that bother him at all? I have no idea. Like, it's just so like I mad, can like mad. Like, I feel like, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't mind, like, like, if you're gonna joke about something like that, sure, like, I think you should, like, I mean, I think if you're gonna do that, like, and you're gonna play the clip, like, ask permission for the person, but, like, I mean, I doubt he actually even did that. No, he didn't, and, um, this is the best part. Um, her mother called in oh, on the radio. Oh, shit. <laughs> and, uh, Catherine did a uh, reaction to it. It's fantastic. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, it's it's really good. I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's really, really... In- it was such a an interesting vibe. And uh, she didn't know about it because she was in bed and she just woke up to a lot of messages. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, no, bless her. She's uh, really, really... Uh, she was really humble about it as well. Uh, and uh, fair play to her mom for actually bringing in the stuff. Yeah. Uh, just defending her and stuff. I, um, I would hope that if I would I would hope my mother would defend me if I would still and like blasted me live on air. And if she didn't, I would too. I, I would ring and uh give out to Mr. Stern. Here yeah. fella <laughs> What the fuck you saying to my friend Sean? Yeah, you'd give him a stern talking to ho ho. Yeah. And um before that, you know, some it actually did become a meme, and this is like one of the worst ones. It was a kid that uh, saw the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker trailer. Oh God, it's it's always the trailers and the yeah. actual screens. <laughs> but basically, um, this guy was like really, like really, really emotional. Like he was like screaming and stuff, and there was definitely like a genuine excitement for it. But it it definitely wasn't put on. It definitely felt genuine, but. People really like took to this one. This is actually really like sad how much the, this guy was being slammed by people, and it like they like put his like face in a meme, and like I think they had that a uh, quote from Red Letter Media: "Consume product and mm. consume and all this stuff," and people like waving their hands at the. Thing, like oh you're a Disney show you're a Lucas but it's just like he's watching something that he has a genuine excitement for mm. what is your problem with that there is absolutely nothing and like this whole thing that you're like trying to get a studio down just because you're not satisfied with it or whatever is just completely crazy to me like yeah. I don't I don't understand that you said he was a. You said he was a kid, right? Like, how he old was, was he? I'm not sure. Like, he was young enough. Mm. Like, I, I don't think he was like ten or something. But he seemed pretty young anyway. He seemed again, like I mean, and I mean, like I, I mean, I say this like I'm, I'm hoping like most of the people like making those memes are under eighteen. I know, but there's like probably some like actual like grown ass men like who do like. Imagine being like, like what what yeah. motivates you? To like look at like a child being happy about something and think like, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, it's just like, shut up. Yeah, no, it's it's really really crazy to me. Let let him let him be. Mm-hmm. And um, like I will, I will come. You know, I 
I've I've had that sort of thing where, you know, I'd see like the Batwoman like trailer or the you know mm. something like that, and sometimes I may be a bit kind of overly sort of you know critical of you know like a clip or you know out of context stuff or a meme and i'm like oh this looks silly but i will kind of um defend that studio and say that i didn't really have any right to do that because i haven't actually seen the full show in its full yeah. context so i can't really you can't really judge it mm. that way and I, I probably judged it too harshly mm. um and uh, I think I feel the same with, like, the Titans television show. People saw that meme and, and that uh, trailer. Yeah, they, like, a lot of people, like, to this day, like, only see the show as, um, fuck Batman. It's literally, it was that one line in that first episode, yeah. literally. And it was only in that first episode, of, I think it was the first scene. And, like, yeah. people, like looked at that and we're just like no i'm not watching this, this yeah and, and i'll and i'll admit like when i first saw the trailer and this is like when it was just the trailer like the show hadn't even come out at that point like i also looked at that and thought like oh no this doesn't look good but i mean i still haven't seen it myself so i can't judge for sure but like yeah. no i definitely i definitely know like i was probably too harsh on it because i do know there's lots of people uh yourself included who are big fans yeah of it, genuinely yeah. yeah and uh season three was uh some of the best uh television uh, superhero stuff I've seen in a really really long time it was really really good stuff mm. really really good um and uh yeah no it's um yeah it's just that whole thing that becomes a meme and stuff like that people just get so um you know I, I think it like has some you can like judge things too harshly if you like hear or see something that's like not with context of uh, something like that and uh, you, you know you have to, you can't uh, judge a movie by that uh, I think if you know you hear other people's opinions but if you hear someone that like genuinely lo- likes it and genuinely recommends it to you but like if a couple of people recommend it but some people think it's shit I think it's uh, it's important especially if it's like really really divided like I think was um it was a certain movie that came out recently that was like really, really divided. I think it was the Lightyear film. Actually. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like what like mainstream film that comes out like isn't isn't really really divisive. Like I feel like, well, like you know, it was such like a half middle of yeah. like five star to nothing. Mm. Usually, it's like mediocre kind of thing. People give it like three or four or two, yeah. and then like there's a couple of ones, and then there's like five, you know, it's. Like, uh, something like Shark Boy and Lava Girl, I would uh, argue that would be kind of critically pan negatively, but I think a lot of mm. audience reviews would be kind of have a genuine enjoyment of that. Yeah, especially like the people that grew up with it. Like, going back to like what we were saying earlier, like, people aren't like going to be saying it's a masterpiece or anything, mm. but like, it left more of an emotional impact on them, like, especially if they watched it as kids, then, you yeah. know, like a lot of even better films like would. And I think, you you know, like, yeah. uh, that's, like, it's the emotional impact that, like, I think is most important mm-hmm. uh, in general. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, the first Scooby-Doo movie. Um, there was a scene uh, where uh, it was, like, you're the best dog in the whole world or something like that. And uh, he was, like, who's your friend, Scoob? I think it was, like, Shaggy in, like, disguise or something. He's, like, who's your friend, Scoob? And he's, like, Frankie, or something like that. <laughs> and it's, like, you know, when people as kids saw that scene, it kind of resonated with them, definitely, you know, because uh, it was powerful acting and it was um, a genuine scene that really connected with people. And, you know, even as a kid, and, like, if you, like, judge it, on its own as a uh, film is still really really well made and a lot of it still kind of holds up and like that Garfield film that first one made a lot of money and that's why they got a sequel because people yeah. went back to see it so you know it is what it is I suppose and uh, yeah uh, some some memes really catch on some memes don't it's just it depends really on what kind of yeah. connects with people I think definitely, um, you know, 2022 isn't over yet, but, like, I think the defining meme of this year, I can't see anything topping a Morbius. 
Yeah, it's so so weird. Like, um, yeah, some people haven't even seen this movie and feels like they don't want to see it just because it's so hated. And I've seen like I've I've had like I've had like one friend on Discord tell me that he's like he hasn't seen Morbius and his whole thing is like he's heard so many memes about it that like it's been like built up as this like just like insane thing and he feels like now if I watch it it's not going to be a special because like. Yeah, that's kind of true. I, I prefer the idea of Morbius, you know? Yeah, I had a weird dream the other night. I watched No Time to Die, and I haven't oh. seen the movie. I haven't oh. seen any of the Daniel Craig movies, and I don't know why. I had a dream that I watched it, and I don't know why. That's weird. I know. It wasn't like the, any Bond movie I've ever seen before. And it was like I like had... Like a full story in my head, and it was so strange. I don't know why. Huh. Why does that happen? That is unusual. Yeah. Maybe I like watched an action movie before it that night, and just possibly just, like, recreating that with possibly no time today. But yeah, it's it's so strange, and um, yeah, especially like you know, I think a lot of things are like changing in the world rapidly, uh, here and there. But I think genuinely meme culture is evolving every day as sure. well. It's becoming a lot more advanced. Uh, I don't mean like like it's good and bad. Like mm. there is a lot of uh, really, really creative creators out there who uh, do a lot of uh, good stuff that create stuff that is really funny. And I look forward to uh, seeing what they come up with. And then there's sort of uh, keyboard warriors that um, have editing softwares and kind of uh, make some filth or make some kind of... As our man Callum's Corner would say, some uh, the filthy little meme monkeys. Meme monkeys, yeah. Um, although, like, some of them are absolutely amazing. And yeah. I think he knows they're amazing as well, but he's just like... He doesn't want to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think... Uh, a lot of it, you know, even like PewDiePie or something, like becomes a bit of a meme at times, or um, you know, like there's there's like certain like quotes as well. Like I think even like the Doug Walker and stuff like that. At a certain time, if you like go back to like out of context clips, and I feel like yeah, as well. So you know, um, I guess like. The, the biggest thing is what we can ask is uh, what is a meme and stuff like that. And I think it's, um, I think a meme is something funny that you see on the internet with either text or uh, a funny video of, um, you know, that's edited in some way. I think that's basically what a meme is. I think that'd be like, yeah, like, I don't know if, if like, if I had to explain it to someone that somehow never heard of a meme, I guess that would be uh, how I do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, it's funny, like you also mentioned about like memes evolving. Like I think specific like formats and stuff like can evolve a lot as well. Like you know, mm -hmm. back in the early twenty tens, like it was it was it was all about like the, the fucking rage comics. If mm -hmm. you remember those, like with yeah. the. You know, you had, like, the troll face, you had, like, the guy spinning, you had his cereal, like, all that stuff, like, in some capacity is coming back. Oh, it's still like, kind of there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, ironically, like, yeah, but, like, I mean, I kind of, I kind of like it in a way that I'm back, and I feel like, even though there's, like, there's people, like, making, like, ironic memes about it, because, like, they grew up with, like, the genuine versions of those memes, and it's, like, mm -hmm. it's funny to look back on those, because, like, they're so, like, I mean, I'm trying to make a good way to think about this, like, they're so, like, simple, but, like, in a way that kind of makes them special. Like, they're just, like... Oh, I'm trying to think, like, how to describe it. It's just, like... You know, like, it didn't take, like, a lot to, like, make people laugh at that point. Because it was all so new to them. Mm -hmm. It's, like, you go back and look at a lot of the Rage comic stuff. It's, like... It's, like, a lot of just, like, really, like, incredibly simplistic jokes. Yeah. But it's, like... that. That's, that's kind of why I like them, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand. There's, like, a purity to them, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely like a purity to a certain memes that are, mm -hmm. um, you know, around and stuff like that. But then there's uh, other things where they just, you know, feel ungrateful and like you know some, you know, it really depends on your humor. I don't really mind what you do laugh at, but mm. you know, you you have to admit like there's some cruel like, 
you know, some people call them dank memes, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, like there is a certain point where you're just like, this isn't even funny. This is just cruel. You know what I mean? This is yeah. just kind of cruelty. You know, it's um, I don't know. I think it's the difference between uh, American and British humor as well. Like uh, British humor is like very kind of there's something pure about it, and then um, a lot of like American stuff is like really you know there's a different style to it. I think I I don't know even if you like compare American sitcoms to British sitcoms, like even if you like change the accents around, it's still like there's a difference to it. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. that sort of humor, and I'm not like knocking. Uh, both cultures at all it's um you know that they, they, they both have their really really good ones and they both have the really really shit ones mm. you know um but yeah there, there's so much um there's so much of uh, a big mix but i i genuinely think that the majority because there's so much of it out there and they're like really easy to create as well like you can like create it in seconds now, especially with your Play Store. Like it's almost like free to do it. So mm-hmm. you know, it's um, a lot of it's like genuinely shit. <laughs> yeah. Know? Um, but the but the good ones are really really good. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have the shit to appreciate the gold. Mhm. Yeah. Like um, I I really don't like the. What's it called? The ear rape. Those are terrible. Yeah, they really of the time. Like, yeah, no, I think all the time. Honestly, I've never really laughed at one of them. So. I feel like in very specific circumstances they can be funny. Like yeah. very specific ones. Like they have to be like, for one, like they they can't it can't be the whole joke. Yeah. Like I don't think like loud. I don't think like having it be loud is like actually funny. That's just annoying. But like. I know, I feel like if it's just, like, if it's placed, like, selectively, like, in the middle of, like, and, like, and I'm just using, like, I'm, I'm way too few examples since that's where I've encountered the most, like, if there's, like, a joke sprinkled in, there's, like, if there's, like, one or two jokes, like, in a way, TP, that, like, that, like, uh, can be considered ear rape, then it's, like, the fact that's, like, so, like, unexpected, like, I think that can be funny, but, like, mm. people, like, who overuse that as if it's, like, yeah, a good enough joke on its own, it's just, like, no. Yeah. Stop it. Get some help. <laughs> yeah. Or um, um, what was it? Like, oh. you know, you'd have like uh, Calm's Corner on mm. YTP of him and like, you know, it'd be like in the middle of it and like you'd hear, here we come, but it's, it's um like you're rape and just for no yeah. reason at one point you're just like, what is this? Or you'd like get one where it's like, Hey, got and it's like you know R.I.P. You know it's stuff like that. I just shut the fuck up, like honestly. Yeah, no, that's shut the fuck up. Um, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, stuff like that stuff's more like annoying to me than anything. Yeah. God, no, imagine, like, having, like, I don't know, like, you have loud kids or something, mm. and uh, for then you're, like, looking after your cousin or whoever and stuff, and, like, you have them, like, on their tablet, and they're, like, they have that noise going off, and you're, like, please, can you, can you eat your dinner, please, or can you do this, please, while I'm trying to do this, and you just, like, have someone, like, scream in one corner, and then you just have, she's like, hey guys, and all this is just, God. You'd feel chaos. so betrayed, like yeah. you go to a YTP to get away from that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, no, it's uh, not even like YTP, but, you know, it just, even like some edits on Instagram or something like that, it's mm. such a, it's such a different vibe now because so many people are doing it. It's just so it's so advanced in a good way, but also in a bad way. Like it's just some some things you see, but oh well, you know, it is what it is. I suppose yeah. it's it's almost like uh, some 
like uh, edits that are made are almost like um they're almost like a, a modern form of fan fiction as well uh, in, a, in a somewhat slight way, you know. Yeah, and like some of yeah. them, like are just fan fiction. Like, um, you've shown me some of these before, but like they're the um, for some reason, like it's always like Disney Princess and like DreamWorks movies, where like people yeah. like will edit together all these scenes, and they're like shockingly well done. Yeah. It's like I, I don't even <laughs> like you find so many of these like out there, and it's just like I like I find it weird that like there's like like there's so many people like who are just like. <laughs> I don't know, like, how so many people, like, having to be, like, this good at editing and, like, also, like, really, like, enjoy this very niche concept. Yeah. It's, like, they'll make edits of, like, um, like one I always see is, like, Jack Frost from Rise of the Guns yeah. and uh, Elsa from Frozen. It's just, yeah. like, they'll, they'll make, like, an entire, like, fucking, like... Movie, really. Yeah, yeah, like, romantic drama about the two of them, and it's, like... Yeah. How? Yeah, I know, <laughs> like, it's I just, crazy. I wish I could, like, I wish I could, like... I, I wish so these, I wish I wish like more of these people like show like behind the scenes videos and like how they do this stuff because yeah. it's like it, like genuinely like there's it's like a really lot of talent that, that goes yeah. into it and it's like yeah again you know, but like something like so like weird and specific but it's like I mean I mean I think it's like good to like yeah I mean I'm sure like it's good like have people like who are like this good at editing like actually mm. making this stuff yeah. but it's if I if I was that good I'd have a lot of Tai Long stuff would, yeah, yeah Tai Long X Tigress um. Uh, Tai Long X, uh, Angelina Jolie in oh. live action. Like, uh, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really interesting. Really yeah. interesting stuff. Um, yeah, it's like uh, so many that are made. And uh, not, not only that, but I mean like some of the modern YTPs as well with uh, Cam's mm. Corner, uh, like on his uh, embarking journey, uh, you know, uh, freeing like the... Was it North Korea or something? <laughs> He's there with a sword. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> I saw one where it was like him like freeing them and like at the very end they had the you know, the, the vegan song he had. Yeah. It was like the instrumental to that. <laughs> He's like walking away <laughs> with like the sword. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so there was like ones where he's like embarking on an adventure to like stop Tesco and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I remember there was that one where it was like, it, it was like, <laughs> it was like Ian Moore like eating Santa Claus or something. So then like, Cal, so then like it was like Callum and Tom had to go on an adventure to like to kill him and free Santa Claus. <laughs> that one was that one was amazing. Oh man. Some people that create that are absolutely incredible. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, it's only like continuing to evolve. Even like people that do not only just memes, but like fan edits in general. Like it's just evolving so much. I think it was um, the writer of uh, The Last Airbender was saying that he received um, a drawing like a fan art of, um, you know, the Ang, I think mm -hmm. the name was, and uh, he was saying when he, he used to uh, get, just receive that and be like, oh, cool, how oh, wonderful, I'll sign that and stuff like that and it'll be cool. But uh, nowadays um, he was saying some people will get that drawing, uh, get a, a digital copy of it, be able to edit it in a certain way, uh, give it a mouth to move, uh, make it move, and literally bring it to life. Honestly, yeah, I mean, it's really like disturbingly, really, really well done. Even with Treasure Planet, I think that's like the scariest because like it literally looks like a scene from a second movie. Like it really, mm. so many good edits of it, and it's incredible. It's really, really good stuff. So. Yeah, like you'd be like. Like when the show is probably first coming out, he get like some kids' drawings and his fan mail, and he'd be like, "Oh, that that that's cool! Like, look at all the kids!" And it's like, you know, like nowadays he'd be getting like fans messaging him like, "Yo, here's my entire two hour, in here's my like entire fucking two hour, Ang X uh, Danny Phantom uh, edit." <laughs> um, I hope I hope you like it. <laughs> Ang goes to Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, 
Ang and Father Ted. Oh, wow. <laughs> be really creative. Airbender Ted. Yeah. Oh, man. I I, I think um, I'm happy that Tai Long is catching on as a meme now. I'm really, yeah, really happy yeah. with that. You uh, like even when like even a day one diehard fan for Tai Long. I was uh, like the first time I saw him uh, as a kid on that telly when I watched Concrete Panda for the first time. I knew this guy is cool. You, and like that's that's when you found it. That's when you first found out you were a furry, of course. Yeah. On your screen saver and yeah. everything. Yeah, he's just I don't know. I've always liked him as a, a character, mm. and when I saw that become a meme, I just got so happy. I was so incredibly overjoyed. It's like it's like it, it was like watching your own son like graduate from college. Basically, yeah. And um you know, when, whenever I see that quote, I'm like, yeah. And uh, you know, it's not because uh people are making fun of that scene. It's because genuinely like it's a fun thing, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh yeah. Um uh, should tell me. Okay, we have a few uh more minutes. There was a certain thing as well, uh, a, me- a meme that became meme was, uh, another Star Wars one was, uh, I don't like sand, and I think people, like, misunderstood what that actually meant, he was actually on about uh, Tatooine and stuff like that, and how different it is here, uh, the contrast between Naboo and Tatooine, that's mm. basically what that was, but people kind of meme it as this certain thing, it's the same with... Uh, the line hello there mm. which people you know that is the first line that Alec Guinness says in the original Star Wars movie that's why that was a kind of recreation of that but you know obviously in the new Obi-Wan show he got to say that yeah, but, yeah. I didn't mind it then because like yeah it's cool it's fun yeah like I mean I would have thought like if he said hello there in the actual show like that could have kind of gone wrong and been a bit like too on the nose with like I think like it was done tastefully enough because it's like it's yeah. the first thing he says to Anakin in A New Hope. So it's like it's the first thing he says from again like chronologically. I actually uh, think that's quite nice. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's um. And also, I'll say like, as someone who's been like to the as someone who like who does enjoy going to the beach, I can definitely say like as someone who's like who's gotten like sand stuck in their shoes and like yeah. all in the clothes oh, yeah. and everything all the time. Like, oh, yeah. I was gonna be honest, like Anakin was kind of spitting facts. <laughs> yeah, he spit the facts many many times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he had the hottest uh, woman on the, um, mm. the poli- uh, politics anyway, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, he he was a smart, smart lad. Mm. Anyway, like, um, yeah, there's so many, like, memes that are great and memes that are good. And they will continue to evolve and they will continue to be crap and they will continue to be very, very good as well. Yeah, I think if I had to point to a single year that I think was like, this one year was like maybe the best for memes, I think I'd point to like 2016. 2016. Because uh, like, just looking back on like all the memes that came out that time, it's like, we had like the B-movie, entire script of the B-movie, we had yeah. We Are Number One, Uh, there was like, I was like, there was like, all the like the Trump and Hillary stuff, which like at the time was actually quite funny. I'm pretty sure uh, my head does not look like a TikTok actually came out in 2016 as well. There you go again, like, for all the, for all the Callum friends and the members of the corner. Um, and there was, like, God, like, so much, like, Pokemon Go as well was another one. And there was, like... I play Pokemon Go. I play Pokemon Go every, every day. Every day. I play Pokemon Go. See, that was based. That was based yeah. as fuck. Yeah. Um... And there was uh, I mean, there was there was that boy, the frog on the unicycle, mm-hmm. classic. There was like, there's too many to mention here. It's yeah, like there was like, twenty was quite good. Yeah, yeah, for like every couple of weeks, there was just like a yeah. new banger coming out. Yeah, uh, twenty sixteen was good for memes, really bad for movies. In my yeah, opinion. I I'd agree. I'd agree. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, no, I I would agree. I would. Yeah, agree. I mean, Rogue One was quite good, but Rogue other than that, like, uh, it was. Pretty but I mean, maybe Tarzan was all right, but other than that, there was a, oh Arrival as well was quite good. That was um, good, yeah. And other than that, it was kind of you know we had the Independence Day and mm. you know other kind of things. So 
yeah, just a lot of uh, good memes, but a lot of other um, kind of terrible things that came out and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's um, they will continue to evolve anyway. I wonder what will uh, be next become a meme. I feel like all the DreamWorks movies will eventually be all be memes. Uh, yeah. I feel like, um, like what DreamWorks films haven't been been a meme yet? Like we've okay, we've already had Shrek, Shark Tale, B movie. Madagascar, Megamind. I'm pretty sure Over the Hedge has one. I yeah, feel. Over the Hedge has been mean before. Um, yeah, How to Train Your Dragon has been as well. Not not quite to the same extent, but like there's like there's, yeah, there's there memes is, about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, Hiccup X uh, Miranda from Brave. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, her name's Maribel. Actually. Oh Maribel, you, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you fucking fake fan. Sorry. Um. But yeah, there's been uh, all those. Um, trolls didn't really get any memes, so I guess. Uh, it, I mean, <laughs> I don't mean the whole film's kind of a meme anyway. So it's uh, like, Boss Baby. Oh yeah, loads for Boss Baby. Loads for Boss Baby. Um, Kung Fu Panda. No. Yeah, oh, Kung Fu, yeah, of course. There's been loads for that. Like, th- there has been like more DreamWorks films that have become like massive in meme culture than there is not than there has been not. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, really really interesting stuff um i think um the 2d animated ones will at one point uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean like some people don't really talk about them but i will recommend you watch them they're actually really really good so. yeah like <laughs> i like i, I kind of can't wait I, I i hope like prince of Egypt becomes a massive meme just because like that's like such a serious film that like the yeah. whole idea that like it could become like a shrek-esque meme is just like funny to me <laughs> Or like even like Legends of Sinbad is like really serious. And yeah. Like the the idea of like um, the Michelle Pfeiffer character being meme yeah. is like so funny to me. And actually, um, even ooh, they were laughing at that. Yeah. Yeah, they love us so much. Even like thinking on the two D anime ones, um, wrote El Dorado. I've seen like quite a few memes yeah. of that. So like. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that is kind of in that comedic element yeah. as well. But yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy. That's an awesome movie. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, it's like so many uh, that can become a meme. I think uh, the next one, hopefully, uh, if it uh, catches on, if Spider Wick catches on, I'm I'm the ma- I, I was the king. Of I it. want yeah, I want everyone to know like if Spider Wick ever becomes like a big meme, this man here is the reason he for walked it. so all of you Spider Wick memers could run. Yeah, I mean, they should at least not. No, no, I wouldn't expect, expect payment. I know they are doing a Disney Plus television show. I would like to either voice Mulgarath or one of the goblins, if that's okay. I would be very, very happy to do that. I would also like to voice one of the goblins if you're interested, Disney. Because I know you're watching this. Yeah. I know you're listening to this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I hope that uh, all of you are keeping well, and yeah. I hope that uh, all of you are going to can you continue to keep m- memeing. Mm. Um, just uh, meme with uh, responsibility. Uh, always remember yeah. that, and you can like and just like anything at all if what whatever it is, mm. and uh, just always remember that and uh, be respectful. Be stay hungry. Be kind and uh, stay uh, positive with everything. And, um, yeah, just uh, try to stay okay and uh, stay safe. And yeah. uh, do whatever it is that you want, unless it's uh, completely against the law, because breaking the law is kind of cringe. Yeah, I mean, kind of sussy. I think kind of cringe, kind of sussy, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, if you can't stay safe, then at least go, like, further in the opposite direction and, like, do something, like, really stupid, because, you know... If you're not going to be safe, just go all the way. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. One more for the road, yeah? Yep. Okay. The Funky Podcast. Woo! The Funky Podcast. Woo! The Funky Podcast. Woo! We're doing a podcast. Doing your mom. But get off the loo. Get off your shoes. Here's what you're going to do. 
Just like we did your mom. The Funky Podcast. The Ooh. Funky Podcast. Ooh. The 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 Funky Podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening and take care.